Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Great People TV. Hope you're having a great week. You're with me, Ben Ibrahim. And today, we're doing a little bit of reflection. We're talking to a very successful person who likes to reflect, who's going to be talking about his journey during the COVID pandemic. That's why the topic is COVID-19, a creative nutcracker, because this person is very, very creative. I'm talking, talking about none other than JJ Fernandez. But before we welcome JJ on the show, just please, as usual, don't forget to support our social media handles right here on Great People TV, which is Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and anything else for that matter. We're working on TikTok as we speak. So TikTok, don't keep your guests waiting. JJ, welcome to Great People TV. Thank you so much for having me. So remember, subscribe, like, and uh, comment. Is that what <laughs> you normally say? Usually, well, I'm glad that you watched the show. Yeah, I sound like a bit of a groundhog day, but don't worry. Don't worry. We're not doing anything groundhog today. But JJ, I mean, for those who don't know you in Malaysia, a bit silly. I'm sure many, many generations have grown up with you, young and old. But because you were a very famous radio DJ, especially especially before the internet generation. But oh yes. Yeah. Just sum up your career in a nutshell. I know you're a trained engineer, but you got into this yes. line because your family is also really into it. Your late father, a very great sports commentator in hockey. I listened to him over the years. And your sister Correct. just got the creative blood. Your brother has the creative blood and you have it as well. So how, how would you sum up your career? My, my career, I got into radio was by accident. Actually, it's just uh, so happened to be a part-time job to just drive around the cruises. And from there, I fell in love with the whole concept of radio, then started learning every aspect I could about radio, moved through all the shifts that are possible in radio, ending up um, being the uh, breakfast announcer on uh, Hits, which is the Hits Morning Crew, of course, everybody knows that. Uh, during that time, created a few segments that uh, you know stood the test of time until today, you still kind of know it, like the gotcha calls and, and stuff like that. And then moved on to Red FM, where besides just being the uh, breakfast announcer, I also was the group content and talent development manager. And then after that, moved out of radio and uh, started to do other, 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 other things. Yes, you have stopped radio. And I do, I do admit, I don't miss your gotcha calls because you and, <laughs> you and Ian gotcha, gotcha me a few times. And I think I was infamous because of that. <laughs> but you you decided to move on from radio, which is a bit sad because you were so good at it. Two questions, really. Any regrets? And what did it? What did you take from it that is helping you in the entrepreneurial world today? Well, here's here's a crazy thing. I didn't move on from radio. Radio. I moved on from traditional radio okay. because I, I there's you still can do radio in all kinds of different formats. Like uh, people do podcasts in a way. It, it's not radio per se because there's no music involved. Um, one of the things I've done after radio was uh, because of my knowledge of radio, I created an app where anyone can start their own radio show. So nice. um, there's no regrets. It's just um, fond memories and a lot of hard lessons learned and taken along this next journey I've got. Let's talk about those hard lessons because the reason I've invited you here, I've always wanted you to be on this show because you have so much to share. But <laughs> I remember we had very, very brief chats about how tough COVID was. Oh. Yeah. And not just from the professional point of view, but from the mental health point of view, which we'll touch both upon right. tonight. Let's, let's talk about the professional point of view. Because, yeah. yes, things are getting better, but we're not out of the woods yet. So you're a very creative person, but I knew that my, you and I, we both struggled during the pandemic. So how did COVID teach you to be more business creative apart from um, and other things? It's, it's, it's because, you see, uh, a lot of great ideas are born from necessity or, or through a hard spot. So if, you, if you're thrown into a hard spot... Um, you have two choices, either sink or figure out how to get out of there. So, um, and and you, we, we come from a generation where we are taught that don't just rely on things that you don't have. Like, oh, I need this, that, or this thing, or that thing before I can do something great. We come from a generation of, hmm, I have an idea. What do I have around me? to fulfill that idea or, or make that idea happen. So um, um, ex 
when it comes to creative, um, of course, the traditional ways and, you know, stuff was put on hold, was stuck. But um, coming up with different ideas of doing the same thing was one of the biggest things that, that, that came out of the pandemic. And a lot of people figure out different ways. There were movies shot d- during the pandemic. There was so, so from that, I drew inspiration looking at other people doing things. And then, then me going through a hard time, I realized I'm not alone. So sometimes sharing that knowledge, uh, going out to people and saying, look, you're not alone. I'm not alone. We are in this together. Sometimes you just need someone to just say that to help you out, you know, especially when it comes to work or creative, because when it comes to creative work, all of us go through a mental block. And I think COVID was the biggest mental block because everybody uh, used to have processes to get out of a mental block, but all of a sudden, all the processes are gone and you had to rediscover how you can do and how you can be creative. So, yeah. Tell us about some of the creative things that came about during the pandemic that helped you and your family cherry makan. I mean, I know some of them, but I don't <laughs> want to tell the story. It's your story to tell. Well, for me, I did I did a lot of... Um, the, the, the weird part is the cherry makan was I did a lot of online work. Um, how I did online work was, uh, of course, first you got to put your face out there and then, of course, the live videos and stuff like that, you do that, all right? But from that, I started... Uh, uh, getting in touch with with not getting in touch there, there were people who still needed uh, promotional work done and I could do it from my house <laughs> so right. I, 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 I I because before the pandemic hit I was a creative director in an agency so I used that to 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 garner in some money but other than that I did everything I could anything you could think of uh, creatively or anything else, I did just to make money, all right? Because um, we needed it because there was no way of money coming in, and um, and and the live videos was 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 interesting because people started you know donating and giving money and stuff like that for the entertainment. Um, but yeah, so I did the live videos and I also um, did some projects on the side. I mean. To, to, to earn some money in. But that being said, I met a lot of interesting people as well that led me to uh, right after the pandemic opening up a business. So... It's all good? <laughs> it's all good. So, <laughs> so um, because... Okay, I, I, I got to tell everybody, no matter what, your biggest worth is your network, okay? No matter what you're going through, Go through your roller deck. Go through. No, nobody does roller decks these days. Go through your phone. <laughs> I look, saw the look business cards, yeah. Yeah, right. Look through your phone book and, and look at the people you know. The, the, the network and the connections you have because that is your worth because you never know what you can do and don't be embarrassed to cold call people and go, yo, um, I'm doing this. Do you need help? <laughs> or or any way I can work with you? Don't be embarrassed to do that because if you're too embarrassed to to do that, you'll never come out of a rut because you're just waiting for something to happen rather than making things happen. Well, that's really, really interesting and that's pretty inspirational how you hustled and I know you got a family to look after. I mean, we, we both are looking after our respective families and it's tough. It's tough when they look at us for from a leadership point of view. What do we do? And we also don't know. I didn't know what to do, I'll be honest. And All right. Was this, and I remember we both saying to each other during the pandemic, again, we didn't have a lot of time to talk about it because we were probably chasing that next cold call. Is yes. That, you know, we were both down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I went... I know, just, sorry, just wanted to, for our audience, what, what did you feel during the pandemic? And, you know, and what no. do you feel now? And were you afraid to admit that you were struggling? I was never. Here? The crazy part is, if you go through my social media, you can see me being very honest about my feelings, about what I was going through. I was not hiding it. I was telling people when I was down or why uh, when I wasn't. And one of the biggest things I think I, I think you you might have gone through it as well was the fact that what you just brought up. We were supposed to provide for a family with a we with the, the the that person. You know what I mean? And then suddenly in a small way, you feel like, I know it, 
it's because of the circumstance but you know you feel like you're failing you're not you're not living up to your bargain of the whole deal you're not doing what you're supposed to do and 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 because of that you spiral into one horrible horrible dark uh uh place where to a point where you yourself start doubting your own skills you start doubting your own um achievements before thinking maybe there was all luck you know you you go down into that because you're your biggest enemy uh and you can crush your, yourself like easily but thank god i have um i'm i was open enough and uh to speak about my emotions and thank god that i have a strong support system around me my family my wife my kids my brothers and sisters nice they were there so um because of that i managed to get out of that so f- good friends family and the support system who who won't be the person who says don't worry sunshine and roses they want that <laughs> they were they were like okay cool give, give give me what you're going through let's go through this let's understand what you're going through you know rather than don't worry everything will be okay the uh, the light at that you know the over positive people yes. i i'm not saying don't be positive but sometimes do not do that to someone who's going through a hard time um listen to him or her understand what they need and let them go through the emotions but just be there for them just as long as they know that if anything goes wrong there's someone there you know a lifeline uh so that's that's how i got out of it actually so i went into a dark spiral and i got out of it because of family the weird part is like i said i went into it because of family not not doing uh, in my mind thinking i'm not doing enough for the family and get out of it because of the family so No exactly 100% because one thing I really really admired about you during the pandemic I really loved your social media posts actually it made me feel better I felt like I wasn't alone I said wow Jay just I mean I've always known you as an honest respectful person and it was just that JJ that I know was coming out in Instagram so I think it resonates really well with you so honesty does pay off and I think in our culture people are so malu which is a shame mm. to admit we have a problem we made a mistake I said hey you know I always tell the kids we're not perfect you know we we make a million and one mistakes every day that's how you get better everyone makes mistakes even me going into radio was because of a slight mistake i made in university so at everything along my life that journey i'm going through is born from a mistake like even uh during the pandemic um i had the whole because i was a creative director and the creative industry ended and now i own a laundry so <laughs> yeah, wow. i would have never i would have never done that so now i've got two laundries i'm working with my brother so we've got two laundries one in damansara padana one in ss15 besides doing all the other things i'm doing so now well keep clean man and if you need to keep clean go see uh, jj yes. right yeah but uh, look jj it's been a great conversation i mean really you've summed it up really really well right there without trying without going to the great detail but you know you hit all the points right there like you said i think you've always been the best communicator and said don't over explain things to people especially yes. when people are going through that spiral down so but one thing that I, has always stayed with me about yourself i mean i like to read a lot i like to go into the internet when i don't know someone there was a newspaper article about you when i think it was a digital newspaper or a print newspaper i'm not sure print made newspaper that migrated to digital And there was yep. a quote there from your father who I ah. never who I never met but I being a sports person love listening to him on TV. He said to you, "Boy, if you're not sharing what's the point?" He says so, that that, can, can, that, can, that you, line, can you elaborate on that statement and yeah, can my, you my just father, tell our viewers why that statement is so important not just professionally but personally as well in good times so, and bad times? Here's here's the thing uh the, the exact line my father taught me was uh knowledge is useless unless you share it because uh what's the point of hoarding this knowledge and what's the point of not sharing or being open and just you know giving because whatever you put out into the world it comes back at you if you put out a lot of hate in the world hate is going to come back tenfold on you as well so put out a lot of of positivity put out a lot of 
of of uh, knowledge. If you if someone comes up to you and says, "Hey, um, do you know how to do this?" Don't be that person who, oh, I don't want to teach him because, or else he'll take my job. The truth is, if you have that thought, that means you're not uh, knowledgeable enough, because someone's coming up to you and saying. Hey, I admire you and I believe that you can give me some knowledge and you're not confident enough uh, about yourself to share that knowledge. So there's something, <laughs> there's a problem there already. So the truth is share the knowledge as you can and the, through the process of sharing, you're going to learn as well. I tell you the truth. The more you share and then you'll fine tune your own knowledge and you'll learn more and you become better at what you do. At least that's what I believe. It's fantastic. And anything that we can expect from you creatively, apart from the laundry, okay? Oh! In 2023? Um, there's a few things I'm working on. Uh, tease, tease, tease us, tease us a bit, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, it's, the, the weird part, uh, part is whatever I'm working on, it's gonna be a lot of things behind the scene, trying to, uh, I'm working with someone to explore the possibilities of doing a traditional, form media and advertising to make it something different that's the best i can say before i can because i'm sounds, not supposed to reveal anything yet it, it sounds like you're trying to refine that magic wand that made media great once upon a time but hey i wish you all the best because me and my team were always thinking about how do we engage people how do we bring on cool consistently bring on cool guests and you know who's not saying the same thing over and over again and tonight you definitely did not say the same thing so JJ, thanks very much for giving up your night tonight and this is your Thursday night tonight. It's been fantastic. And brother, if you ever want to come back on Great People TV to share that creative media magic one, please just send for me a sure. WhatsApp. For sure. Anytime. And thank you so much. And keep up the good work, buddy. And thanks, remember buddy. once again, like, share, and comment. <laughs> oh, you are the marketing machine of Great People TV. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Oh God, I'm uh, I am blushing not just because of my shirt because JJ is a very good friend and I don't see him enough. So yeah, I think I need to uh, spend more time with him and his family. Wonderful family as well. Go way back. So that there you go, everyone. Really, nothing cliche about that interview with JJ. Sharing. He didn't say sharing is caring. He said sharing is important. And what's the point if you're not sharing? So and go through your network as well. If you're going through a tough time, tough time, not just professionally, but personally as well. So thank you very much, JJ, for being with us tonight. We'll catch you next week on the next episode of Great People TV. And I don't have to say anything about socials because JJ has already done it. Take care and stay safe.